We're going to talk about Joe Rogan in the next segment. And, uh, you know, I sent Joe a message that I'll tell you about in the next segment. It's not a mean message. I just said, you can say whatever you want about me, but if you read George Soros' talking points about me on air anymore, I'm going to tell folks, not stuff I know from knowing you personally, about 20 years, but about that damn CIA operation here in Austin. And that's all I'm saying. And it's not like some threatening thing. It's like, dude, you're not going to slap me around without me coming back. So just get ready for that. And, and you know, I almost hope he does something. Because I'm all sick of this faux tough guy crap all day and everything else that goes around here. I mean, I take on Hillary Clinton. I take on the globalist. And I'm not trying to be the biggest tough guy around here. I just got to do what I got to do. And it's not... Well, we'll we'll <laughs> we'll talk about it coming up. We'll see what happens. But in fact, I just had to give him fair warning. I just have really thought about this, and I I can't not be quiet about the Joe Rogan situation because it's 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 tragic, and it's in our time. The real story has to be told, and so and then it's not fair of me to send him a text message a week ago saying. You know, you say one more damn thing off of George Soros' talking point, I'm going to come after you. Nope, let's just do it. I think that's probably going to be better. And I and I think that's probably what needs to be done. It's just that I don't take any pleasure in this, and and I just, I knew it. I kind of knew it, and then I kind of ignored it, and it's almost like I'm guilty. I don't know how to explain this. I'm guilty, and this isn't about getting on the show because I wouldn't even do it for that. And I realized the whole thing. And I, you know, it's so bad that oh God, it's 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 that's why I keep balking. It's not that I'm afraid to do it. It's like it's so bad that I I, I like it's kind of like cops when they get in the house, there's a bunch of dead bodies of kids in the boards. They're like, they don't want to pull them up. They know they're there because they've seen the videos the psycho did. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying Joe did that. I'm like, Joe's, Joe's a great guy. And you just it's like I'm kind of like not looking forward to pulling these boards up because man. There are a lot of damn bodies buried right there. In fact, I can smell them. We'll be right back. You know, I'm not going to get into where the UFC money came from 20 years ago to start it up or who owns it. I think everybody knows that. I'm not going to get into any of that stuff. I've known Joe Rogan since 1998. I've, I, I got to him pretty good by 99. He's a smart guy. He's a funny guy. But he's very shark-like. I'm not saying he'll screw you over unless he needs to. So he's not like a shark trying to just, like the scorpion, ask the toad to take him across the, the stream, and the toad says, well, you'll sting me to death. And he says, oh, no, I promise. And he gets the other side, he stings him. He goes, why'd you do that? I'm dying. He goes, I'm a scorpion, idiot. I don't think Joe Rogan's a scorpion. And, and you know, I've seen Candace Owens come on this show and get us boosted and have us connected to all the big people. I still promote her stuff. She's a good person. Uh, and all these other people that I get demonized, I get attacked, I'm prasada non grata by the establishment so you don't come on the show. I get it. I don't need them on the show. But with Joe, it's a little different because I know he's super smart. Because I, the, you know, the guy you see on air, he's got one guy that plays up to the potheads and makes them feel cool, and he's got another guy that plays up the pseudo-intellectuals. And I mean, he, Joe's very smart. In fact, he knows all the stuff I know. And, and then I learned about the groups that are involved, the whole sponsorship to promote DMT and psychedelics that certain groups out of San Francisco want done. It's kind of Timothy Leary stuff part two. So Joe Rogan's the new Timothy Leary. And, 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 and you know, now that he's got such a huge show, he's been brought into all that, which is great. I'm not one of these guys that's mad that somebody has a big show. My concern is when he goes, oh, I got Alex Jones on the show and set him up, made him look dumb. Like, I can't see that. And then... I start thinking back to what I saw, what I what I witnessed, the, the things, the groups. And I'm like, my God, because you know somebody, you then just ignore. Obviously, anything big in culture is going to have certain groups come in and try to take it over. And so I'm not ready to talk about all this yet. And I don't take any pleasure, you know, showing Joe and other people, you know, oh, I'm not stupid. Look what I can do to you. It, it's not that. It's that. He perfectly read in the last year George Soros Global's talking points exactly as they were and didn't even look down. Because I even got the internal memos 
uh, and, and things that Soros and Hillary and Podesta put out to news groups. So he was getting talking points exactly as they said. George Soros, why, he fought Hitler. He was a war hero, you know. Uh, uh, you know, Alex Jones is crazy. He's bullying, you know, parents of dead kids. You know, none of that's true. And so I talked to him and I criticized him. And it was when Owen Benjamin was on a few months ago and Joe calls him and goes, listen, it's gotten too big. I want you on the show. Come on next month. I promise you'll do it. Everything's going to be okay. And he, he thought like, oh, Jones just got banned. He's peaking now. This will all go away. And I'm like, listen, you need to have me on the show. Just stop reading their talking points. He goes, right, you're on next month. You're, never talk to me again. Psh, radio silence. And then my son listens, so he gives me clips. And I start telling my son, like, in the morning and stuff, we're cooking breakfast, because that's what we do at, like, you know, 6.30 in the morning is a ritual. We're in there cooking for my wife and my three daughters. We cook a big breakfast in the morning. I'm like, stop telling me what he said about me. And he shows me. I'm like, ah! So it's like crapping on me and rubbing it in. And he's just saying more talking points and more talking points. And clearly, and then I talk to people that know him. and like, well, Joe's hanging out with these professors. You know what that means. The local professors. <laughs> He's hanging out with the leftist professors who, you know, have a three-letter name to them. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And then I just see it. I see it. I'm like, dude, I'm not stupid. Stop it. You don't have to have me on to counter all this. You can throw me under the bus. Just don't rub it in, and he won't stop. And then I start sitting back. What I know about the psychedelic movement, who's funding it, what I know about how they try to create these culture groups, uh, that, uh, you know, are self-help and, and, you know, how they're fronts, how they use universities as front groups, the UT psychology department working with certain groups to test things in certain areas and all the rest of it. And I'm like, oh, my God, I've been sitting right next to this and not doing a, a thing about it because I'm just busy, not expecting someone I know is right there with it all. And then they're actively not just letting me get chewed up and not have response, but aiding in it, reveling to curry favor with the establishment. And so that therein lies the thing. I mean, let's just say this. Let's just say this. I haven't gotten my eyes dotted, my T's crossed, and I've got stuff just about the general field that is, um, let's just say, uh, shooting photon torpedoes down the Death Star reactor shaft. And that's what frustrates me is people, because I'm genuine and real, think I'm that dumb and I'm that stupid and that I will put up with that crap and I will not. So in Benjamin, anyways, I, I'm not going to get into it all and I really don't want to and it's not something like, you better have me on. I'll not go on his show, period. Or if I do, I'm going to tear the living hell out of him. It's not going to happen. This isn't about getting on his goddamn show. I, if I wanted to be famous, I'd already sold out the system. You got it? My God is being authentic. But it's also about being authentic, which means I will be authentic. And so that transmission's coming. But I'm, when I do it, I'm going to burn it down real good. Go ahead, Owen. You got any comments to that? Yeah, I mean that that's intense. I never even thought about how uh how deep state stuff interacts with with college professors cuz my dad's a professor and I've definitely seen some weird stuff going on with um with campuses like uh, uh Blossie Ford, like she was out of a psych department at Stanford, I think, and all these people just seem to be associated with Oh, colleges. Joe Rogan is the deep state. He he's hiding right in plain view, Mr. Trendy, Mr. Cool. And he's he's he just wants a sponsor. He's ready to do it. And so well, yeah. I, well, one thing of, yeah, one thing about Joe that I always thought was weird is uh, how he doesn't have any opinions. Like you'll listen to one episode, and then the next episode, he'll he'll say the like the exact opposite to the point where y you're not coming from an authentic place. It's and a chameleon. A people, yeah, a lot of people see that too, and I think that. You know, when I do live streams, a lot of people will uh, write comments and I just react to comments. And that's one reason why I there's some videos out of me like talking some smack about Rogan is because a lot of people want to know about Rogan because people will just keep being like, Rogan's a shill. Rogan's a shill. What do you think about Rogan? I'm like, I don't want to get involved in drama, you know, but but that being said, he had me on and he told me that I shouldn't make fun of Sean King and that I don't represent myself properly on Twitter. And By the way, Sean King looks like Errol Flynn. Or looks like uh, Red Butler. <laughs> the dude's the dude's wider than I am. 
He's whiter than Bill Burr. He's like SPF 5000, and he's a horrible human being, too. And so uh, he's a race baiting, deep state liar. And so when I'm on there, and then I get kicked off Twitter permanently, and then Rogan doesn't have me back on to, to tell people where to find me. Uh, at that point, I kind of knew something was going on with him. And then to see him not have you on when you were triple deplatformed and and just see Oh, he the, wants to be the last guy standing. And so this is just Joe to understand that I kind of knew this, but I just wasn't busy thinking about it. And and, and then so I, I, I researched it more and I looked into it. And I made a few phone calls and it, it's just like, wow, wow. But this is how the system, let me tell you, he's now the chosen one by the left even more than Jordan Peterson or any of those guys, they are uh, handling him. They're they're positioning him, uh, everything, and uh, it's a very very. Uh, let's just say the whole thing's got a glass jaw, and I don't even take pleasure in that, but I do take pleasure because all these so-called alpha males don't get. I will freaking punch hard when I need to, and it's not about me. It's about once I know the truth. And once I everything is clear, like you, you know, you're busy in your life, and all of a sudden things crystallize, Owen, and then you know the truth. Well, he also looks exactly like a human thumb. Let's and, put that uh, graphic up. Yeah, this is proof of cloning. Uh, this is absolute proof that they can now clone human beings because I can't tell which one is Joe Rogan and which one is a clone. And I just, you know, I find that astounding. All right, well, we'll have to have a part two about this. And, you know, I just spent some time on Joe Rogan. You know, it was it was um, Timothy Leary. This is declassified, by the way. I'm not saying things that are my opinion. Who, from the beginning, as a professor, got busted doing some things that were illegal. And so the CIA and the FBI got him as an informant by the 50s. And by the early 60s, they said, you're going to introduce drugs to the kids. You're going to introduce LSD and be our cover guy while we uh, have local labs at all the universities producing it. And I just so happened to know some people who were here in the 60s who were producing LSD at the University of Texas for the Central Intelligence Agency. Little Bird told me about it a long time ago. <laughs> and so they have these local gurus everywhere. So then later in life, you run into it and you go, oh my God, it's the same thing. And so that's what all this is, is introducing how cool and great these things are, but not just so they can get you on the drugs, the DMT, all the rest of it, but so you're listening to them as their guru when you're on the drug, which is a at far mind control operation. And then they set up a health clinic or a workout thing, a, a cool thing. And they've got these girls and everything's cool. And now you're in the club, depending on who you are, and they get celebrities there. And now they've got a cult going for politics, for blackmail. I mean, not, not Joe Rogan. I was talking about Timothy Leary. So that's what I'm talking about, Owen Benjamin. And uh, that's that's that stuff. I mean, you know, Bill Cosby, you know, got convicted of drugging women. But what if what Timothy Leary did was going on in every city, major city around the country, and what if people didn't know about it? That'd be a pretty big story, Owen. Well, that's intense, man. That's so intense. I didn't even think about that. Do you think is does Jordan Peterson fit into this? Because he's he's got that whole like uh professor vibe going on too, you know? Oh well, Jordan, you know, and again, I want to be clear. I support Tucker Carlson, I support Sean Hannity, I support Trump. I'm not one of these guys that like sees people that are successful and smart and goes, I gotta shoot them down to prove I'm big. I'm only talking about all this because I feel bad that I saw it and was even kind of told it like I was an idiot a few, and I was like, and a few compromising attempts by certain people. And, and then I started thinking later, like, you know what I mean? Like when you know people, not Joe, not him or, or not other people. I mean, just when you know people and then they try something on you, you, you tend to not be as uh, uh, awake to it. Dude, that, that's, I don't even know what to say. Like, that, this is kind of blowing my mind a little bit. Well, you know, the there's going to be Leary some people, thing, there's going to be some people crapping their britches tonight. Yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know, man, that's, that sounds intense. Like, I remember that they, uh, 
The whole intellectual dark web seemed a little odd to me when they started turning on Brett Kavanaugh as a unit, and then I realized it was kind of a uh, a political apparatus. And that's when I first, because I was a big Jordan Peterson fan until he said that Brett Kavanaugh should step down, and that that went in the face of everything that he exactly. Preached. They build their political capital, their avant garde, till that last moment they show who they are. Yeah, and, and then you, you listen to his biblical talks and stuff, and it's all about the eye of Horus and all this Egyptian imagery. Oh, and the stuff. New York Times promotes him and everybody else. Everybody in Meet the Renegades, the Intellectual Dark Web. You read that and you get the battle list of how the left's trying to invade our attempt to free people. Yeah, yeah. And it's like they, they had me on that list in the beginning because that dude right there, um, Eric said that I was, uh, I was like the. The every man's genius or something. Yeah, let's be clear. Then, they tell you how you're a genius who's already successful to recruit you to start riding their you know what, and then they tell you well, to stay in our cool club, you've got to do this. Right, and I'm incapable of that. And, and that's why I'm like not good in politics at all, like because I'm incapable of, of having people be like, okay, but you have to pretend that this nonsense in order to stay in the club. And I'm like, then I'm out, I'll just chop wood. You know, I just, no, you're right. You're like, right. You're like, right. Well, just so imagine, short. imagine when we see him with Kevin Spacey and all this. Imagine all the witnesses out there. Imagine all the witnesses out there. Imagine that. Can you imagine that for me for just a second? Like, just for a minute. Like, the witnesses, because it's not just who I was talking about earlier. I've got people years ago before I even knew some of the names of these folks telling me all about it, and then I later hear it from other people, and then I ask myself, why are the people out with this? Because like you said, Owen Benjamin, it's about power. These people don't have real power, and so they seek to create artificial systems of power. Yeah, like, uh, I, I'm pretty sure Joe Rogan is legally considered a little person, like he can park in uh, handicapped parking lots. And so when you're that small, and you feel small, because I know little dudes that don't feel small, um, and they're cool. They're totally cool. But like, it's about power. And I've, I've never had that problem. It might be height. By the way, I'm 5'11 and I don't feel little. And Joe's only a few inches shorter than me, but I don't get the whole little guy thing. But I mean, uh, yeah, there's Joe. You're a big guy. Uh, how does Joe behave around you? Well, I always thought he was 5'5". Five five. That was what I was told. So if you're 5'11, you have a good seven inches on the guy or six inches or whatever. I, don't I, I just don't get the I, whole thing. I don't have a Napoleonic I, I, complex, but you're saying Joe has a Napoleonic complex. Well, people that crave power over truth always do. And I know tall people with Napoleon complexes. You know, there's probably times in my life when I've had uh, Napoleon complexes where I'm totally just kidding about the tall thing. I just think it's a funny theme. But, like, there's little dudes that have a Napoleon complex. There's big dudes that have a Napoleon complex. And it's about control over other people over truth. And once you make that satanic deal that 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 truly is a faustian deal where you take control over truth uh your life starts becoming awful and and you're in a golden you're in a prison with golden bars as um mickey rourke said in barfly i always thought that, that was such a good line you're in a a prison with golden bars you know and again there have been a lot of people that got scared during this purge a lot of people that did all these bad things it's just the larger continuum of the truth has to be told. And then people just hope that that truth doesn't then come out. And I just hope that the Joe Rogan experience of cucking to the left, cucking to the control, giving into the establishment, not standing up people you claim are your friends, I just hope that that doesn't become the modicum of the new century. What do you think? Well, I'm, I just, as you're talking, I'm so glad I don't have horrible secrets and that my most uh, shameful moments are, are free for anybody to see because people have already tried to uh, use them against me. And I have a, a relationship with my wife where she knows my darkest moments and darkest thoughts and darkest experiences. So it feels absolutely unbelievable to have a life where I don't have to worry about something horrible <laughs> coming out. Uh, wow. So I'm grateful. Well, I don't think Joe knew about the intelligence agencies recruiting him until they were all around him. But I think there's an embrasure uh, going on. But not, I wasn't talking about him earlier about CIA cults and sex cults. I was talking about somebody else. <laughs> but uh, no, seriously. Uh, but um, Owen Benjamin, hugepianist.com. I'm Alex Jones, thenewswars.com.
We'll talk to you soon, my friend. God bless and have a great week. You're the man. You're, You're the, the man. man. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. We'll be Cheers. back with Roger Stone.